Hi, this is Ben Hewlett from harmonicaworld.net. Today we're going to take a look back at the origins of the harmonica. So we're going to go back in time, starting with this guy here. That's, that's your first harmonica right there. A blade of grass. Let's try and make a sound. Let's see if we can make a better sound than that. There you go, that was a sort of happy birthday on the blade of grass. Thank you very much. Okay, so part of the development of the harmonica is the Jaws harp or the Jews harp. Uh, now, every country has its own type, and these are, these are Cambodian ones, and these are made from bamboo. Kind of simple instruments in a way, but I've tried to make one and they're actually quite complex. Now, uh, these haven't really been dated. They found some metal ones which are about a thousand years old, but I'm guessing that these would have predated that and possibly even predated the Ken, which we'll come to right at the very end of this video. Uh, I'm not too sure about that. If you want to know more about Jaws Hearts, you could go to Johnny Cope's website, which is Sound for Health. So I'll just show you how this one plays. You just twang it basically. I don't know if you can hear the harmonics, but there is actually a note, a tune being played apart from the percussive thing. Um, let me see if I can do a tune. Okay, Scotland the Brave. Do, 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 do. You might just hear it, I don't know. Apologies to all bagpipe players. And then we'll go on to some of the metal versions of that. This is a Vietnamese instrument called a Dan Moy, and it's um it's a it's a same thing, a Jaws harp, a juice harp. These these are all pitched in certain keys. This one's in the key of D, for example. I think. Pretty good. So I really like that one. And then there's another one here which is a little bit, I think it's a bit lower in pitch. Same idea. Uh, these are apparently made out of the shell casings from the Vietnamese War. How cool is that? That's what I'm told anyway. If you like the look of those, you can buy them from Johnny's website. And here's another one. It's the last one of these that I'll play. That's what I call it anyway. This is very very big and heavy and a little bit dangerous to play because it's got so many spikes on it. Can you zoom in on those spikes? So if I um, if I kill myself while I'm playing this, if you could just bury me somewhere nice, please. There we go.
and uh, this instrument is called a ken, K-H-A-E-N. This one's from Thailand. Now pretty much all countries in Southeast Asia have their own versions of this, but I'm not going to show you all of them. Some of them are just one tube with a reed inside. The reeds are actually in this inside this gourd section here. So each pipe has a reed, and you you blow or draw, and you get the same note. You can slightly bend them as well. Um, I was going to tell you about these. This particular one is from Bangkok, um, Chattachak Market, the weekend market. I went through pretty much every one in the shop to find this one that that works nicely. I've also been up to the northeast to Isan, to Roy Et, to see how they make them. Now, actually, I've got a video of, of the guy making them, which I might uh, put on YouTube at some point, if anybody's interested. It's quite an interesting process. He makes about uh, uh, three... It takes him three days to make each instrument, that's right. So it's quite a complicated process. So we'll just have a little play of it. I don't really play this in the, in the proper Thai style. I think there is a movie of me playing it somewhere. Uh, if you look under R. Trob, R-T-R-O-B, Ah, trob. You probably see that uh, playing it at a festival somewhere. So you blow in here, and no sound should come out, <laughs> except this one leaks a little bit. When you put your fingers over the holes, then you start to get the sound. slightly bend notes by just they bend upwards and uh, each each note has an octave as well so if I play that one and that one's a B flat there's two D's around here so that's the way the Thai people play it and it's um, it's a very powerful instrument when it's played like that. I don't tend to play it like that due to lack of study, I must admit. So I just sort of play a rhythmic thing. finish this video off now and tell you what's happened to this. You can still see this being played a lot in Thailand if you go, you'll see it being made and you can see it being played, it's very popular still. But when this guy found its way to Europe about 300 years ago, it was picked up by lots of people who wanted to re-engineer it. So what happened was, this, this part pretty much was kept, all this lot was taken off, this lot was taken off. So this is the part which has got the reeds inside it. So this is the part that was kept, and it was picked up by various engineers. I'm not going to go into who it was, because it's shrouded in mystery, and everybody's going to say it was somebody and somebody else. But uh, that's the part. And uh, when you look at a modern-day harmonica, like that, for example, you'll see there's the, there's the influence right there. So that's how the blade of grass has turned into a modern-day harmonica. There you go. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon.